Welcome to This Is Jen, episode 47, coming to you right after my stand-up comedy special called The Naughty Corner has been released. Good for all of us that it has been out there for a couple days now because uh, before I was really in the the algorithm for Amazon, people were just typing Naughty Corner into Amazon. Hmm. Welcome Shady Ray, our (laughs) producer extraordinaire. And, you know, uh, so just lots of crazy stuff was coming up. But now Amazon gets it that this is what people are looking for. Well, maybe some people are looking for the Menage a Trois Under the Christmas Tree book, which is literally, literally a book that comes up when you search for The Naughty Corner. People have no fear of God, Shady. They have no, like, if that has to be the book you have to write, (laughs) do you have to set it during Christmas? And I, you know, and I guess they use it naughty because like naughty and nice. Like the the lady was on Santa's naughty list oh. for the. You know what? This is a horrible way to start this podcast. This is a terrible <laughs> way. <wonder> if you <laughs> but I told Shady, I said we're not. We had to start over twice due to technical issues, and so I said no matter what, this is we're it. not starting over. Even if I go on a random tangent that involves the phrase "menage a trois" under the Christmas tree, we're not <laughs> starting over. What I'm tr- all I'm trying to say is thank you for We're your probably response. Not on the good list anyway, so it's okay. Oh, oh, I've been I've been on Santa's naughty list for a while. <laughs> all I'm trying to say is thank you for your unbelievable response to my stand-up comedy special. I am personally following the hashtag Naughty Corner Comedy. See, adding comedy to there the end go. of it because other people again had been had been using that hashtag for other purposes. Naughty quarter comedy. If you and and I know that people will be watching this special for months to come. A lot of people are just planning to watch it over the holidays with family and things like that, doing even virtual watch parties. So it's not like with a book release. It's kind of like you either talk about it the first week it's out or the moment has sort of passed. Stand-up comedy specials are eternal. So I will continue to follow the Naughty Corner Comedy hashtag. I typically try to like and leave comments on uh, on people's posts when they post about it. So Naughty Corner Comedy is the hashtag. And you can find out where to watch it at NaughtyCornerComedy.com. But now that I say that, it's just Amazon Prime. So you can type in NaughtyCornerComedy.com. But it, I think you'll just want to watch it on Prime because that's where it's free. It's free on Prime. I don't know how I'm getting paid for this. A- and Joe, my husband, keeps asking, like, yeah, so what? So if it's free on Prime, like, boy, so are we getting a paycheck? And I was like, Joe, these – what Shh. boring questions. What is the money <laughs> talk? Like, I – I do everything I do just just for the love of it, for the there love of the art. And that yeah, and that's what we can tell our mortgage company. You know, they're like, we want to get paid. And it's like, you are not respecting What about honor? What about <laughs> I'm going to write on my electricity bill, what about honor? Or just like in the blank, like just where it says credit card number and in the little boxes, I'll type the word honor. I'll go. type artistic integrity. There you go. That's what I have. Who needs money? When you have your art and you feel good <laughs> about how you were putting it out there. Not me. The, resp- <laughs> the, response, <laughs> the response has been amazing. So thank you all so much. It's just been unbelievable. Every time I open up social media, more people are talking about it. The best it, – here's what's interesting is a lot of people are saying they're watching it more than once. Ooh. And, and then another thing is a lot of women are saying my husband didn't – he'd heard your name. He didn't really know why I followed you. He didn't get it. But then husbands are watching the special and they're like, oh, wait, this is actually pretty good comedy. Like, this is good. I'm like actually laughing. This is funny. <laughs> and so now I, I have a lot of new husband fans. So there you go. welcome husband fans. Uh, and it's interesting. My PR person said she said, I noticed that you just in general seem to have a lot of male fans as opposed to most female comics. And I do. And I'm always grateful for you guys. A significant a uh, percentage of the Patreon members of people who leave comments, not on Inst- Instagram is kind of women only, but, <laughs> but, um, but I do, I have a, a lot of guys have been following me for years. And I very much appreciate them. Okay. We will talk about, I, I need to use this episode to apologize. Shady, I screwed up. What? Yeah. So I, it's the craziest thing. I accidentally manifested COVID. What? The pandemic, the whole How thing. I, yeah, I manifested you? it. I know. And this is what I always tell you guys as a Catholic, don't mess around with manifesting this crystals, the secret. Like I manifested COVID and, and I have realized that this is true. 
And so I'm going to apologize that for that in a minute. But first, I want to give you all a holiday gift, a Yuletide Ooh. treat. We have Thanksgiving is this week, of course, and then uh, and then we have Christmas coming up. My little early present to you is you being able to sit upon a throne of righteous judgment of me for what an unbelievable fool I am. And this is just one of those stories that it it will make you feel so intelligent and grace-filled and on top of your life that I I just feel like I, I can really bless you with this little tale. So, and actually, Shady, you don't even know this. Oh. You're going to, the Shady is going to think this is very funny because she, she is familiar with our family's calendar and, and what we have going on. So, <laughs> friends, <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, if you guys, those of you who are watching this on YouTube, and if you're not, you know, got, you, you guys got to be subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's just where it's at. Uh, you might notice my nails. I have, I have a broken fingernail. Uh, my, my nails are literally falling apart because that's just how crazy my life has been with the release of this comedy special. I look like I have, it looks like my finger has been chopped off. I mean, it, it looks really weird, but that's where my life is that I can't even keep on top of nails and, and things like that. So... Friends, um, I had made an appointment for myself at my children's orthodontist to have a, a dental issue just looked at, like just a little consultation to to see what they might be able to do about this minor thing. So the day of the appointment rolled around and I realized that I totally screwed up. I had a conflict and I could not make this work. And so... I, okay, you also need to know that I have really extreme social anxiety. You wouldn't think so, given the stand-up comedy tour that I produced myself and whatnot. And those of you who went to the tour know I would hang out with people in the in the lobby after the shows. I, I actually do have uh, interacting with human beings for me. I, I'm like a I'm like a robot who was misprogrammed. And she, by the way, I wish you could, Shady's doing robot moves. Um, you know, once, once, once we make our YouTube millions, we'll have a camera on Shady so you can see her doing the Awkward robot. robot. There, yeah, in, Don't in the know background. What, what do I do with my hands? Yeah, when it, when it comes to dealing with other living creatures, I am like a robot who just didn't, I got the wrong software. I, yeah, I'm, it's just not good. So, and my and my little robot brain tends to go on the fritz in certain types of social situations, especially ones where it's pretty clear that I'm not meeting expectations. Um, we can unpack all of Jen's issues uh, at, at another time of why I have issues with expectations and things like that. But my brain does, it tends to shut down in these kinds of moments. So... I call the orthodontist's office, and and this was less than 24 hours ahead of the appointment time. And so obviously that they don't like for you to cancel, of course. And and I said, you know, I'll pay the fee. That's fine. I understand your time is valuable. I almost never do that. I'm almost never a flake like that. But this day was just crazy. Again, hence hence my claw nail here (laughs) that I cannot. And it's been like this, by the way, for like 10 days. I mean, this didn't just happen this morning. So uh, I just got overwhelmed when I was on the phone with the um, orthodontist office because I thought I heard disappointment in their voice. And I have issues that I need to continue to work on with my therapist, with letting people down. And so I blurt out, did not mean to blurt this out. The words just came out of my mouth. I said, I'm sick. I'm sick. That's why I, that's why I came. I'm sick. And, you know, metaphysically, I was sick, sick of the the <laughs> difficulty of managing my life, sick of sick of the world, sick of the, the schedule. The, yeah. So I just blurt this out. It was not a premeditated untruth. It was just I just blurted it out. And you will understand where this is going, dear listener. I didn't because I was so nervous. It's social anxiety. So the receptionist says, oh, sick, you say? Do you have symptoms such as fever, chills, cough, 
Oh, and no. I and I'm just nervous. I'm like, yes, yes, all that, yes, 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 yeah. That's that's the one. That's that's my problem. That's why I'm not showing up for this appointment. Well, now it's like, ar, ar, ar. I mean, it's like people. I, I practically expected men in hazmat suits, armed with fire hoses of bleach, to break down my front door and just start like hosing me down and like wrestling me and like putting swabs in different bodily orifices. The way this receptionist re-ask, reacted, she's like, oh, 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 you, you uh, COVID risk. I mean, she practically diagnosed me with COVID oh, no. over the phone. And then you can't be like, it was all a charade. It was a charade because I am socially awkward and I don't know how to deal with people. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm in peak health. Look, I'll come down there and I'll cough on you and you'll you're see sweating. like nothing will happen. <laughs> you go and you're sweating. Like, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be funny. <laughs> I get so wound up about this that I show up to their office like in a cold sweat, like, <laughs> like, like, like like my heart's racing. I'm like, I'm not sick. Like, I look, look, I'll please. rip off my mask and show you I'm not sick. <laughs> so, so then, and, and this were like shady, shady's oh involved gosh. in everything our family does. So shady, uh, with now is a good time for me to tell you. So my two daughters got their appointments canceled, canceled because they, yes, and they go to the orthodontist too. Oh, yes. Yeah. I got my whole family blacklisted. From the orthodontist's <laughs> office, because I blurt out that I'm sick because I was too ashamed to tell them that I'm just a spaz and an They're idiot. They're probably supposed to go next week. <laughs> they are. No, they are. And it has been canceled because they think the de- orthodontist's office thinks they live in COVID house. Oh, and no. we, can re- not, we cannot return for like more than two weeks because oh, I had to shoot off my mouth. So, friends... <laughs> We're all sick. <laughs> this is my Yule Day. Oh, oh, and then one of the receptionists at one point indicated, I think she indicated that she knows who I am and follows me. Oh, they me. do. They do know who you are. Okay, so they then. They know who both of us are. They follow both of us. Okay. Well, hi, guys. I, I'm, I'm just an idiot if they're watching this podcast, <laughs> if they're listening. I'm just, I'm an idiot. Sorry. Uh, but here's the other thing is I, they probably follow me on Instagram. And so they're like seeing me being out and about, you know, hey, um, here I am at the grocery store to get some champagne oh, to sell. No. And they're probably like, she's she knows she's dying of COVID and she's out and she's running errands when we know, we know, we know, right. She's a super <laughs> spreader. The woman is a super spreader. <laughs> so look, my gift to you for this holiday season <laughs> Is that you can feel superior to me in every possible way. You're not making up stupid stories to the dentist's office because you're so utterly incapable of dealing with life that you can't even be honest and just be like, look at this broken fingernail. Do I look like someone who can keep up with appointments? So you're more on top of life than I am. You're not making up insane stories and you're not getting your kids banned from medical appointments that they kind (laughs) of need because you shot off your mouth because of your own ineptitude. So that is my um, more appointments for everyone else. That's right. You know what? That's yes. Yes. So their other patients are now blessed (laughs) with a very open schedule. When I get my entire family of eight banned from the orthodontist calendar <laughs> now there are there's a there's a bevy of appointments should you like should you want to visit this orthodontist they're wide open <laughs> because i just took all the full wilers off of their calendar you show up just a little bit of dentistry right just, just a little bit right? I'm, st- I'm still imagining it works for right, everything right i'm still imagining me running in like i'm not sick you have to <coughs> i'm like i'm so wound up i end up coughing like, like i'm not you, sick you show up running across right. the street <laughs> you're welcome <sighs> You're welcome. Uh, Join my Patreon so that you can have access. Because there's more. Every single week we do a bonus episode where we're even more unhinged. This is actually (laughs) the kind of thing I usually talk about on Patreon. Patreon.com slash this is Jen. Okay, so I owe you guys an apology. I am so sorry that uh, just for the whole pandemic. Uh, let Let me tell you why this is my fault. Okay. So you know that I am a little bit of a I, I, I'm a I'm a self help junkie. I I like I like the self help people because they're everything 
I'm not. <laughs> I follow all these little guys who have their podcasts, and they're like, I get up at 5 a.m., and I do my workout, and I remember when I did unhealthy things, like sometimes I'd even have a beer, or one time I had a slice of cake, and now I have my egg whites and spinach, and I get up at 5 a.m., and it's great. To, they're all like 30 and none of them have kids. And so they're like, I like to no challenge. Wonder. Well, yeah, they're like, I need to, ch- I, I try to challenge myself to, to just, to just come outside of myself and not be so comfortable. So I hit it extra hard at the gym. And I'm thinking like, ask any mom, like we're getting woken up at all hours. Like, I have kids <laughs> throwing up on, on us. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But these little guys, they're so positive and they do their gratitude journaling every morning. And I'm I have a childlike fascination with the self-help space. So I listen to all these motivational speaker podcasts. Okay, so if you are in that world at all, and, and I also hit those media rounds when my book, Your Blue Flame, came out because it was shelved in self-help, which if you've listened to this podcast for well, it, you're the past five minutes, you're like, wow, that's How? just a big mistake <laughs> to put that woman in the self-help category. So it, it, my book was about just finding your passion and this is the worst pitch. You know what? <laughs> Whatever. It's fun. I'm not put, but watch my comedy special. Don't buy my book. Sorry, Zotterman. All right, buy my, it's called Your Blue Flame. Whatever. The point is I did a bunch of self-help podcasts. So I, I know a lot of those guys in that world now. And they are big on vision setting. And and I like this idea. And as a Catholic and as someone who's, you know, always just barely mentally keeping it together, I do like this idea. So the idea is that when you have a goal, when you have something that you are trying to do, it's it's really great if you visualize it happening. So there is actually a study that uh, I, I don't know the details of it off the top of my head, but it is this is a verified real study that happened where they took basketball players who were trying to increase their rate of hitting free throws. And so they had three groups. One didn't do any extra practice at all. One practiced quite a bit, some amount of hours per day. And then the other, the third group, spent the same amount of hours visualizing themselves making free throws as the guys who were actually doing this extra practice. And the study is very compelling that the guys who visualized did about as well, they did comparable results, very similar improvements to the guys who actually practiced. Wow. Michael Phelps talks about how before he won all his gold medals, he would visualize himself, you know, just getting in the pool and splashing around. I don't know. I don't know. Like just doing a little like the, the you know the aquatic no, swimming, yeah. aquatic ballet. I don't know, you know. Synchronized uh, swimming. I'm not the most athletic person in the world, uh, but I like sports psychology. I'm very interested in it. And so when you're trying to to hit a hard goal, let's say you're trying to lose weight. There's there's a lot of compelling data that if you visualize this, especially if it's a lifestyle change, that it actually does a lot for you. Like if you imagine yourself, like let's say right now you're overweight and you're in bad health, but you imagine yourself just being out on the hike and bike trail on your bike and like you're just ripped. ripped. Yeah. Yeah, And like you got some new tattoos to show off your bicep. Because what it does is it sends a signal to your brain that this is possible because it's so easy to get in our routines and get it in our head. Like, you know, I've never been ripped. I've never been in good shape. It's just, you know, why even try at this point? Like, it's just not possible. But when you visualize it, your brain is like, yeah, this this is, I can see it. I can see it. I, it. It might be possible. Now, there, this goes, there's a fine line territory, though. Some people in the hippie community believe in manifesting, which is where you say that you tell the universe that you want something and you visualize it and then you get it. And so there's a fine line because in both cases, when you're just doing positive visualization, when you're manifesting, you're imagining what you want. You're calling the image to mind. Uh, The difference is the power you think it will have. Those of us who are Catholic and sane uh, think that the the power is just from showing your subconscious this is possible. And it helps you get rid of your own negativity, spiritual attack, limiting beliefs. Um, But then the manifesting people, I, I actually had someone tell me one time, no joke, She wanted the new iPhone and she said she manifested it because she visualized it 
And she just kept visualizing it and telling the universe she wanted it. And and she dead serious told me, she's like, yeah, the universe gave it to me because I manifested it. And I wish you could see the look on Shady's face. She's like, like, yeah, and you just think like, you know, people who lived during brutal wars where like tons of people they know were killed in battle and and all their friends starved to death. You know, Shady, they should have just manifested like a, meat a different life. Yeah, no, I should have made it like I drive a Ferrari. I'm not I don't have the Nazis taking over my town and killing everyone like universe. This is not what I wanted. Uh, so it's all ridiculous. Like you look at any tragedy in human history, like Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. They just manifested all their like, don't sh- manifest serial killer guys. Jeez, like, who did that? you know, people killed by cannibals like you should not have manifested being killed by cannibals manifest something different you know please so uh now but we all have that you know in the back of our mind like you read some of these books and someone's like yeah i live in a mansion and you know i i went from 10 pennies a year that my scrooge boss would throw at me as he laughed at me and now I make $780,000 a year because I manifested that. There's a part of you that's like, well, should I? Like, you, know, you tell Jesus to look the other way. You know, like, well, Jesus, could you just look the well, other way for I a manifest? second? I, and I'm, I'm just going to give it a shot. Just manifest a little bit. <laughs> right? Just, 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 just a little bit of manifesting. Okay. So let's take this back to me causing a pandemic. All right. So I, on, on my computer here, I decided to do visuals that would trigger me to just stay positive and stay focused on my goals. Uh, If you know anything about me, you know that I'm a drama queen. Uh, You know that I am just, I'm I'm just an emotionally, I have an emotionally unhinged side of me. And so when, when we were, when we were first doing uh, the Naughty Corner tour, the stand-up comedy tour and working on the special, I, so I decided to quit my job, my stable job as a talk radio host at Sirius XM that provided benefits for my whole family. And the reason I quit that job is because I was switching careers into comedy touring. When you do comedy tours of the like that I did, that can be a, a full-time salary. And, and it was just great. It was better for me because then I was actually working less. It's like I'm gone sometimes, but then when I'm home, I'm home. It's a great, great career. <laughs> uh, so um, this is normally where I would play the Jaws music, but uh, I got demonetized by YouTube recently for copyright infringement. So please imagine ominous music. Da-da. Yeah, can we hum it? Da-da. They can't demonetize me for that. Okay. da da Da, da. Okay, yeah, good, good. Da, 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 and if you da, da, see da, da. ads on this video, you know that it worked. Da, da, da. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was really, that was really just some excellent. I'm, you know what? I'm never doing sound effects again. It's <laughs> all shade. Like, da, da, da. <laughs> so, because I was taking such a large risk by quitting said full-time job with benefits for my whole family that came with a national media platform that was just me solo show, the Jen Fulweiler show, um, my own solo daily two-hour national radio show. So obviously that's kind of a big move to quit that job. And so I needed to make sure that touring went well. (laughs) Oh, the fun times we have. I was like, you fools, COVID's not still going to be around in fall 2020. I'm going to be touring so much. So... (laughs) Notice I'm not working as a futurist consultant right now. Um, But because that's what we were gearing up toward, when I set up this new business uh, of leaving the job, and and, and and Joe and I very much saw comedy touring as a business, I said, okay, my key metric is ticket sales. I mean, that's where the income comes from. And so that's what I need to be focused on simply as a business person when I decide whether or not to take a media opportunity, whether or not to do a show, whether or not to do a new book. Like, l- let's bring it all back to ticket sales because that's the simplest thing to measure and that's the best way to to run this business. So what I did to inspire myself is I found pictures of theaters. And so on my lock screen, on my computer, and as my background and even on my phone, I would put these beautiful pictures of theaters as if you're standing on the stage and big theaters, you know, theaters that seat like eight, 10,000 people. 
And the visualization was just like, you know, we're okay, we're getting out there. We're going to be in these great theaters. I mean, I'd already done a theater tour, so I knew it was possible. But like, let's take it to the next level, even bigger theaters. And so when I, whenever I would see these images, it was just a moment to pause and say, this is what we're doing and it is possible. So every day, three to four times a day, perhaps five huh. or six, I would put the full power of my mind on the pictures of these theaters. And I would say, yes, yes, this is this is it. This is we're we're going for this and this I see this happening. This is real and this is possible. Uh, but do you know what kinds of pictures of theaters, again, taken from the stage facing out, do you know what kinds of pictures are available online? Empty. Empty, oh! Empty theaters. I manifested a nation of empty theaters. I got pictures of theaters from all over the country. <laughs> Seattle to Tampa, from Maine <laughs> to, you to, were so close. To, to, to LA. Like I every so many times a day I was like, yes, yes, this is the future. This is happening. Five times a day I was putting the full power of my mind to seeing this. And but what was it? It was a nation of empty theaters. I manifested COVID. I'm telling oh you, it was goodness. my manifestation. The universe was like, just like I gave your friend that iPhone, Here you are. I will give you what you want. You may, you want to manifest theaters. it? Because, you know, there was a part of me. There was a part of me that was like, well, I mean, no, I'm Catholic. I don't do manifesting. I definitely would not do that. But uh, like, does it uh, <laughs> but, like, does it work? I mean, like, well, if I were to do it, would we be booking 10,000 seat theaters? Like, I mean, I'm just, you know, and, and God was like, well, now. Now I have to send a plague to the entire world to teach you a lesson about manifesting. Add people next time. like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you think you're kidding. I did. So now my little lock screen images are pictures of people. But then, you know, there aren't, because of the way rights work, like it's, it's actually pretty tricky to find events where you can publicly post pictures of everyone's faces. It's all this like Lollapalooza stuff, you know, with people with like mohawks. You and like stills from your comedy special of your, of your fans. Well, no, well, I, well, maybe I'm just going to manifest. I'm going to be huge in the like 18 year olds with tattoos there demographic. You well, and you know what's funny? Actually, I mean, this is okay. Now I'm getting kind of freaked out. So I did. I all I could find is these like Taylor Swift concerts and you know these these tours that attract these young kids and um, shady. Hmm. Then I went viral on TikTok. Oh, what? My I, like goodness. I have a million views on TikTok. Like what? That's well, okay, crazy. this is all right. You know what? Just so, what else should I be manifesting? Uh, I ten million subscribers to my YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> like, okay, but I don't. But don't don't manifest. It's against God. It's because we talked about that on another podcast. It's like trying to control the universe, and this is a good. Yeah, quit it. Yeah, cut it out. This is a good lesson that sometimes you cause a pandemic when you when you manifest and improperly. Really it because that's great. you know with. With what what we believe as Catholics is not that this, you know, Ouija board and tarot cards and all this. We don't think it's necessarily false. We just think it's bad news and evil because you're bringing bad spirits around when you try to wrest power you don't even know from God. Doing. Yeah, it's like when you're kind of like, God, step aside. Me and whatever other entities are floating around in the spiritual realm, I think we've got this one, God. Why, why don't you just <laughs> move on over? Well, th d let me just tell you that this it's bad news. No good. It's bad news. You don't want to do that. So I want to say again that the reactions to my stand-up comedy special have been amazing. I really encourage you to look up the hashtag, especially on Instagram, Naughty Corner Comedy. It's so fun to see everyone posting pictures of what they're doing while they're watching it. it it's really great. And one of the things that I, I want to impress upon everyone is, obviously, this was a huge risk just psychologically because, yes, it's all worked out and the special is beautiful and it's getting a great response. But I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know how well my manifesting powers were going to work. Like, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that it was going to work out well. Like, what if the comedy hadn't been pulled together? Or, as happened in many of my other shows before this one, what if I looked horrible? You got actually look up This Is Jen 
episode 46 on YouTube. Just search for Fullweiler46 and it'll bring up that episode. I posted video of myself from another show and how absolutely horrible I looked in that video. So what if that had happened? Like the special comes out okay. It would have been but sad. I, well, there'd be no special shady. You know, <laughs> you know how vain I am. Like, well, yeah, you know, so we spent six figures or I didn't. But so people invested six figures in filming this massive comedy special. I don't like the way I look, so cut it. it. There is Yeah, just because we had a 15-person team and an eight-camera shoot in 4K, uh, we'd have to hit delete <laughs> on the whole thing because Jen looks like trash on stage. Uh, so there were just so many ways that it could go wrong. I'm always encouraging you guys to take risks, do what you're called to do, and don't worry about that kind of thing. Like, j- just don't, don't worry about what could go wrong. Just worry about doing your best. And I, by the way, I have an example of when things go wrong. So it's not like things always work out over here. Because here's the thing. I am now connected with so many new people thanks to this special. I am now really good friends with the guys at Spirit Juice. I mean, I consider them just absolute friends. I will definitely hang out with them whenever I'm in their area. I think we will work together way more in the future. Shady, you've seen all the people who came into my life that either I hired or they volunteered or whatever. I have all of these great new connections because you can't do this alone. I mean, anything you do, and and even if it's not something insane and massive, like filming a comedy special, whatever it is that you are called to do, the the smallest thing, arranging flowers and taking them to people in your neighborhood, whatever it is, you can't do it alone. You will need other people's help. And, you know, when you lie awake at night and you talk yourself out of that God-given dream because you say, well, I, you know, I I don't want to, I might be foolish or, you know, what if I write that novel and people laugh at it and say it's stupid? Or what if I record that song and post it on YouTube and people hate on it and, you know, give it a bunch of thumbs down and tell me I have no talent? Well, the way to look at that is to say, first of all, I'm going to focus on excellence. I'm going to try to be great at my craft. So that probably won't happen. But let's say it does happen. Let's say the world rejects what I'm putting out there. Maybe the plan for your life all along was just the people you were supposed to meet in getting this together. Maybe you have to ask your cousin for help getting your YouTube video filmed. And yeah, maybe maybe nothing happens with the with the you know, you do a cover of what would be something ridiculous to cover? Like Wonderwall. Yeah, yeah, but no, what what uh, everyone covers Wonderwall. What like the safety dance. Oh my from, god. Yeah, yeah. Which again I keep getting demonetized for copyright Domo infringement. Arigato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Domo Arigato. Ricotto, Mr. Roboto. Yeah, you do an opera version of that. And you're like, this is my passion. Domo Arigato. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and you're like, oh, maybe this will go viral. And then it doesn't. And like three people watch it. And somehow you have five thumbs down, but only three views. You know, and like maybe that's how it works out. But in the process of putting it out there, you have your cousin come set up your camera and your studio and the sound, and then you end up rekindling that relationship. Whenever you think about following your dreams, remember that the the end goal and the plan for your life here might not be what it seems to be on the surface. Maybe you will fail horribly and be rejected <laughs> and, and it'll be miserable. I've been there many times with many things I've tried, but every single time, I put myself out there and I try something, even when I fail, I end up connecting with people, meeting people. Something happens that I'm like, yeah, I was totally meant to be here and I was totally meant to do this, even if the end results of my efforts were not what I wanted. And speaking of which, I have a great example of when things work out the other way. So uh, Jonathan Blevins, who is excellent to follow on Twitter, he is Bearded Blevins. You have to follow him. He's fantastic. So he, (laughs) I don't know how these things happen. Somehow people were talking about the song on Eagle's Wings. It's a church hymn. More music that I'm not playing so that I don't get demonetized. (laughs) Uh, People were talking about that on Twitter. I later found out that Joe Biden had referenced that. I did not know that at the time. I, it was a very busy day. So people are talking about that. Somehow, let's see, I think it was Jonathan Blevins. And Jeannie. And, well, right, right. Okay, so Jeannie Gaffigan 
somehow got involved in this conversation. Oh, she said that I should I should do a dance to on Eagle's wings. And I said, uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, you know what I did? I said I was born for this. Why would I say that? <laughs> <laughs> why would I? Why would I say I would? I don't dance. I don't like that hymn. Like, wh- why would I ever say that? So Jonathan Blevins challenges me to a dance off. I, I think we. I think we touched on this earlier, but I do have an update for you on this. Uh, and it the video that was created. Oh, I know what it was. We talked about this before I created the video. The video yeah. So episode forty five. I was talking about the fact that mm-hmm. I, I knew this sounded familiar. Okay, episode forty five. I was talking about um, just the fact that I had been challenged to this and that I can't say no to challenges. I, it's it's a personality flaw. So Jonathan Blevins says we should do a dance off to On Eagle's Wings. And, the, and Jeannie Gaffigan was on the thread and, and she was stirring that pot. And so I just, what, what am I, I'm, I'm going to kill the party? I'm going to be like, no. Oh, you got to dance? No, I shall never You're do a dance. I it. couldn't, I'm not that person. I If I am talented to a dance off, I have to do a dance off. So Shady and I, yes. uh, we filmed, we filmed the resulting video. Uh, you can see it on social media, but... Why would you want to? The, I, it's on Instagram. If you look for when was that? Like November, roughly November eleventh, twelfth. You can look yeah, it a up weeks ago. on Instagram. But you know, no one needs to see that. It's it was intentionally ridiculous. Truly, I and I mean seriously, of all the ridiculous things I have put on social media, it is the most ridiculous. It was pretty funny, I but love it, it. but I I I mean, was it a work of art? Yes, yes. but it was intended. Like, we were intending for it to be over-the-top, like, cringe, ridiculous. It And so, and people loved it. So, of course, this is the video that gets around. You know, there, there are other videos that I spent 10x the time on that I thought had a little more sophisticated humor, some, some subtle things. Oh, no, this is the one that just really gets around. So those of you who heard episode 45, uh, you will never guess what happened with this. No. Never. So the video is just me being ridiculous. Now, a, a certain subset of Twitter got a hold of this video and they assumed that I was, their words, not mine, uh, an atheist liberal who was making fun of religion and that just just judging a, a book by its cover there. Uh, so not big Google users, these guys, if they wanted to do one Google search of my name, uh, maybe I'm not making fun of religion. Um, and they and there were entire threads where these guys were like virtually high fiving each other. Like they would say all these vile insults to me and then they'd be like, yeah, you owned that lib. And, you oh, know, it's like I mean, goodness. I'm Catholic. I don't label myself liberal or conservative. Um, I'm just I'm just Catholic. But considering that um I have had women dressed as handmaids protest my pro-life talks. Uh, been a while since that, since someone was like, that That lib, we need to own her. I can't. Uh, so they just came after me in a big way. Like they found pictures of my children and my family and were posting them in their little insult threads to me. And they were just going after me because they thought – they didn't understand the story behind the video. They thought that it, I, I, I'm not I'm not sure what they thought was going on, but I guess they thought that I was just making fun of the him or that they didn't understand the contest and, and all that. So every time I opened up Twitter, it was the most vile, nasty, vitriolic, insulting my physical appearance. And th- by the way, that's one thing. But in general, I don't I don't play the the gender card. I don't play the sex card, but I will say that when, if, if people don't get a man's comedy, like they don't go after their physical appearance. And by the way, this is 100% men. I think maybe two women chimed in. It was like 100% men going after me, insulting me in every possible way. And I'm just sitting there laughing, like for that video, for, of all the things I have said on social media, of all the things I've said on this crazy podcast, it's this is the one like my stupid video of dancing to on eagle's wings it's like they just went crazy on me so uh for two or three days 
it was, and, and I don't mean, you know how sometimes people are like, I got hated on. And then you look it up and it was like two mildly impolite comments. I mean, it was straight up hate. And and it, it was like, I'm, it was all I could see when I would look at my Twitter mentions. So as I was saying, beautiful and lovely things happen when you put yourself out there. But sometimes disastrous things happen. Sometimes you have a Twitter mob come after you because they know nothing about like what you are doing. And I, who knows why they came after me? Sometimes these things happen. And you have to accept that that is, that's part of it. And and for a lot of you, you know, you're not going to be doing ridiculous dance-offs with Jonathan Blevins, which, by the way, my kids found out. They happen to know that the guy Ninja, like the super famous, the, the, ask someone who's under 20, they'll tell you who he is. My kids found out that Jonathan Blevins is Ninja's brother. And so they were like, well, you have to do this dance-off. Like, you have, like... If Ninja's brother challenges you to a dance off, there's no way that, that you can get out of this. So most of you, though, are not being challenged to dance offs by Jonathan Blevins. I mean, probably actually a measurable percentage of you. Uh, but, you know, he's probably only challenging like, you know, 5% of my listening audience to dance offs. But whatever it is that you feel moved to do to put yourself out there, maybe starting a ministry, maybe you want to start a virtual book club, at some point it's not going to go well. At some point, you're going to see some Facebook thread where people are like, well, I thought her virtual book club was stupid. I was really bored. You know, something that really hurts your feelings will happen. And well, not that these guys hurt my feelings. It was actually pretty funny, this this Twitter attack, but it could have hurt my feelings if I were a different person. And you have to accept that as just part of it. It's part of the game. It's part of putting yourself out there. And the key to being able to weather this kind of thing and not worry so much about rejection is just don't make it about you. Make it about how you're supposed to serve. Make it about what goodness you're supposed to create to add to the world. And when you keep your focus on that and not your own ego and not being adored by people, then when you have entire Twitter mobs of people like telling you how horrible you your are. Torch and the, yeah, yeah, with their torches and their like insult I mean, they yeah, they they insulted me in pretty much every way they could. And you'll be more ready for that when when you just try to make it about I'm just here to serve. I am just here to put myself out there in the way that I'm supposed to put myself out there. Not everyone is going to like it. And that's okay because it's not about me. And maybe just stay off of Twitter. You know, that's probably that. That's probably all right, that's probably the best lesson. All right, that wraps it up for this week. Go watch my stand-up comedy special. It is called the Naughty Corner. And now, weird pervy stuff is not coming up on Amazon when you search for it. So that's very exciting. It is also out on Apple TV, but you can also watch it free on Amazon Prime. So that is very exciting. You can get full episodes of this fine program, bonus episodes on Patreon that we do only for Patreon subscribers. And when you subscribe, you get access to the full archives. I cannot recommend strongly enough that you go back to episode one on Patreon. The very first one we did, I think I called it The Incident, and I dished the whole story of all of the drama that played out behind the scenes. Juicy. When I yeah, it's juicy. It's good. It's really good. When I filmed the stand-up comedy special, I dished all the drama, and that is in episode one on Patreon. You just scroll all the way back to that. Patreon.com slash this is Jen. All right, Shady, so we are headed into Thanksgiving. It's yep. going to be a weird Thanksgiving. You guys know, you know from my last episode, I want us all to get together for Thanksgiving in hamster balls. Yeah. I feel like we can make that happen. We can we can travel in hamster balls. We can visit our relatives in hamster balls, and that is a way that we can connect with one another so. and, and stay safe. So I'm full of good ideas. Keep tuning into this podcast for more of my brilliant ideas, and I will be back soon with episode 48 here on This Is Jen.